Welcome to Raptor Education Group. I wanted you to see a little bit of our outside area as well, so you can kind of put together where our birds are cared for and how they're cared for. Uh, this is our native plant area, and uh, it really is lovely in the summer. And uh, we put an emphasis on anything that's native, uh, whether it's native plants, we do a lot of education for children and so on and so forth, and adults and try to put all the conservation pieces together so we can have a, a really uniform program. Uh, over here is our clinic. Um, our clinic is, uh, uh, we'll be going in in a little bit there, but uh, it's about three years old and uh, it has been a real benefit to us. Um, as our patient load increased, we really needed to have more space to take care of them. And this has been a real benefit for us. Uh, over to my left is our intern house. It's also called the nest and our welcoming center. Uh, the interns live on the top floor. We can house nine interns and we also have a, a separate room for our visiting professionals and that would be professors or veterinarians that come from out of country or in country that want to stay for a while and, and learn with us. So it's been a, a huge benefit and a huge help for us um, to have the intern house. The intern house was donated by Wausau Homes and we're extremely grateful for that. It has really um, allowed us to grow and to do much more education, which is a huge part of the work that we do. We have uh, our flight building and uh, the one thing, and we will be going in in just a minute, but the one thing that people don't quite always understand is, is that how our birds are so well conditioned. And this building is 110 feet and half of it is uh, separated so the eagles can fly there and they, they condition themselves. So it's, uh, it's a huge building and they really do well. Um, they have to recover from broken legs, broken wings, um, starvation, which means that they, their um, muscles have atrophied. So there's a lot of conditioning that's necessary um, to get the birds back on the wing. So they're 100% when they leave us and that's really important. Here is on, on this area, we have uh, an uh, area for an eagle display, not in the winter of course, uh, and we have an area for our trumpeter swans uh, right now I think we have seven or eight and uh, cygnets as well. We do raise cygnets here with our foster parents so they're not imprinted to humans. An extremely important situation. Um, if they're imprinted to humans they get in trouble with people. They often approach people and that can be dangerous to them. They also then don't breed with, with uh, trumpeter swans which is uh, the reason that we want them to be out in the wild so we can increase the population. We're going to be going into our trumpeter swan compound, and of course it's frozen right now, and we do have geese here as well. And in the summertime, we have um, a uh, sandhill crane and white pelicans that people can see and um, get some education on. Yes, we were just talking about the trumpeter swans, and here they are. Uh, one of them, one of the adults is our foster parent and uh, she raises the little ones for us. Little ones come from um, other areas. Uh, because we have the foster parent program, it's really important. So we get them from all over and um, they're raised by our foster parent. Uh, some of the little ones that you see, the little cygnets, are just recently out. And uh, they were, actually one was um, shot when one was, uh, had a fishing hook that was attached to it and uh, had some tears in its body. So it's, um, it's here now and they're starting to get more acquainted again. So this is our trumpet and swan area and I'm sorry the water's frozen, but it is winter. We do a lot of education for kids and uh, we have education uh, camps as well, adventure camps for kids in the summertime. Uh, kids really love to do the wingspans and there's a lot of other things that are sort of hidden by the snow now that kids can participate in. Uh, so it's a lot of fun for them and it really, uh, education is one of our huge um, ways that we um, teach about uh, conservation and try to get people engaged in conservation topics and not just raptors and not just birds but uh, everything that will make a difference. 
I'm going to take you into the flight building now. But before we go, um, it's always interesting that when people drive up, that it looks like we've uh, we've had some deaths here. And what this is, of course, is uh, when deer are hit by cars, often they're brought here so we can utilize them for our raptors. And uh, this is where we cut them up. So we just had two deer here um, brought in. And so the blood is not staff. It's not mine. It is definitely um, deer or any sort of wildlife that gets hit by a car and we can use to feed our birds so they have natural food and uh, they have a natural search image for what that is. All right, let's go in. Um, here we go. Okay. This is the flight building, and uh, you can see that it offers a, a great deal of exercise for the birds. We do have cameras on them all the time, so uh, they're able to show us their flight patterns, um, even when we're not looking at them, which is actually the most important time. I'm going to get them to fly for you. And meanwhile, um, I want to point out that we do have deer carcasses in here. We have huge fish, that uh, salmon that uh, uh, the DNR provides for us. and. Um, uh, almost everything that they would naturally encounter. And this is actually where our youngsters learn too. There's a youngster, speaking of a youngster. Um, he was raised by our foster parent and they're not imprinted to humans, which is really important. Often we get the question that are, they look tame when we're holding them. Uh, they're not tame. Um, it's just a matter of how we hold them and uh, we keep them in kind of a low stress situation. We don't sedate them. But uh, if, they're, if they feel safe, they really um, respond well. Everything about them has to be perfect when they leave us. Um, they have to have perfect feathers. Uh, they're like airplanes. Um, if you're missing a part of an airplane wing, you're gonna have a problem. They're not gonna be able to fly as well, and you might have a crash. It's the same thing with birds, and uh, I think that's um, too often overlooked. So we really make, put a lot of effort into making sure that they're absolutely perfect, that they're waterproof when they leave us, that they um, have perfect feathers, and they're, um, uh, if they're going out in the cold, that they're going to be uh, winterized, so to speak, so they have the appropriate down. And in here, this is not heated, and this is a, a perfect place for them to winter and to start getting exercise. Hook, hook. from ground up. This is the 28 foot tall ceiling. And when they go from ground up, they're developing their pectoralis muscles, which are their flight muscles. And another really important thing for, for our patients. It looks a little dark in here, and that's on purpose. Um, with bald eagles, if they can see out, they tend not to exercise. And uh, they don't like to fly. They're just, you know, they like to look out. Uh, very different than golden eagles, very different from red-tailed hawks. So uh, this is made specifically with bald eagles in mind. We have a very deep pea gravel on the ground that goes around their feet when they, when they um, land. Uh, remember, they're recovering from various injuries, including broken legs, um, um, car hits, so they have abdominal injuries or, or muscular injuries, broken ribs sometimes. And um, they have to, when they land, so it doesn't impact their their uh, feet. Their feet are extremely important. We put a lot of effort in making sure their feet are good. Um, this is round and it doesn't impact them. It doesn't cut their feet. And um, people think, oh, well, they, you know, they're big, strong birds. Well, they are, but uh, when they land, they land like a feather. They don't, they don't crash into things or shouldn't. So we have bounce boards in the flight here so they can bounce off it. Um, again, we have, um, we have cameras. Right now we do need to redo some of our perches, um, but it is winter time and uh, that, that will happen when we get our birds released and we get some um, get spring going again. Hey. People ask, do they fight in here in captivity? No, they don't. There's no reason to fight. Uh, they are not territorial when they're, when they're with us. Um, the youngsters are getting used to how to behave around other age groups, which is really important for when they go back out into the wild. They have to experience those di different ages. So it's important to have more eagles than just one. Um, that way they're 
um, they learn what to, you know, how to how to be an eagle, and they learn what the parameters are. They learn manners. They learn behaviors, and the adult teaches them that. And when they're in here, the other adults in here will also teach them. Sometimes because they make mistakes, kind of like our own kids. If they're too sassy or they get aggressive at something, then they're gonna, you know, they're gonna learn that that's probably inappropriate. And that's a really important lesson for babies to learn. Um, much like a puppy that you get that maybe was taken away from mom and dad too early. Um, you know, they tend to be more bitey or, or not have good manners. Same thing with baby eats. There are uh, foster parents are sitting on the floor. She's missing part of a wing, but she's in here uh, with the chicks uh, to kind of encourage them on. And uh, she's getting ready to take vacation when they're released. Welcome to the Reggie Clinic. Uh, we'll show you about how the birds get to us and uh, how, they're, uh, how they're admitted. So this is where uh, people bring them. And during COVID, we had uh, another area that people could drop them off uh, in a more protective area. But uh, now um, we, they bring them here and uh, they can fill out a form. So we know everything about the bird, um, who found it, uh, where it's from, um, and its records uh, stay with it. We do have um, the immediate physical um, and a physical exam on the back and uh, that helps us immediately. Let's tell people to bring them to us in a box, cardboard box, the best to transport birds. Keeps them quiet. Um, it's a visual barrier, so they're not frightened. It does have some holes in it. Um, and we tell people to put a towel or a uh, t-shirt or some sort of fabric on the bottom so it's soft and uh, so they're not going to hurt themselves and slide around. And then putting a towel on the top is really important. Just a towel, um, it, it uh, allows air to get in. Clothes pins work really well to keep it, keep the bird in there so you don't have to use tape or anything. And that's, uh, that's how our birds arrive, hey. in a little box. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No. So, Would you be able to bring where, it? This is where we um, no. get our okay. calls in and we uh, go on Google Maps okay. and see yeah, where the birds yeah, yeah. located um, well, and then how far the, uh, uh, they are from us. And then we call transporters that um, can help pick them up and, uh, um, and uh, so transport them to us. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. This is the exam table, and this is uh, where a lot of our birds are examined, uh, almost all of them as a matter of fact. Uh, we have a tub where the loons swim, and we do feed them live minnows, and uh, everything is pretty specific to the species that we do. We have a, a corner that we do our laboratory things. We have, our, of course, our microscope. We do hematocrits and hemoglobins on these birds, and uh, one of the things that we do a whole lot of uh, are lead tests. Unfortunately, we have a whole lot of lead um, in our environment and uh, a lot of lead ammunition as well. And if uh, one of our patients eats lead, whether that be a, uh, a vulture or a bald eagle, uh, they end up getting lead poisoning from their digestive system. So it's an important, very important test and one that we use probably more than anything else here at Reggie. so good. Oh, I'm sorry. Lead poisoning is a, a terrible toxin and unfortunately um, it, they have access to way too much of it. Whether it's in um, our fishing tackle, lead sinkers and lead jigs that uh, people unfortunately lose and usually it's trumpeter swans or um, loons that pick that up in ponds or, or rivers or whether it's lead ammunition that's um, fragments when it's in, uh, in a body that's been shot or harvested. And uh, they eat carcasses more than people realize. So I think it really is important. He does have some green on his tail. He does have lead poisoning, quite a bit of it. Um, when he came in, he was uh, at about a medium range, but he has the pellets in him still. Hi, buddy. Hey. Hi. So you can see from his eyes that he is not, um, he doesn't have a normal mentality at the moment. And so he is a bird that's uh, a little more, what I would say, 
um, uncomfortable. Uh, it does affect them neurologically. It affects us neurologically as well. And uh, he was extremely dehydrated. Uh, not so much anymore, but his mouth is still a little blue, so he still is having some oxygen depletion. Um, and uh, again, he's not sedated at all. Hi, how you doing? So when we admit a bird, it takes us about 10 minutes to get it out of the box that it comes in and do a full physical on it. Uh, we do a, a physical to see if their, their legs are moving okay. We um, stretch out their wings, make sure that's, um, that everything's moving all right. Obviously, we talk to the people who've rescued them or um, who have seen them. We ask people to send us photos. We ask people to send us videos when they see them so that way we can um, give a good uh, indication as to how they're walking, if they're, um, if they're uh, able to move well or, or not, or if they're drooping a wing, for instance. Um, he is uh, not doing any of that, which is a good news, but uh, he is a little thin. Hi. Raven, can you please see us? Hi. I just read. Hi. Uh, when we talk, when we work with them, we always um, announce ourselves so they aren't surprised. The, we are dealing with predators here, and this one has some um, confusion um, because of the toxicity, the neuro neurologic toxin. And uh, right now, I'm just examining his, his abdomen so we can see, and he's, he's very thin. Um, that happens too with lead poisoning. It, um, the birds can't eat, it shuts down their digestive system. So he hasn't been able to eat much and uh, was able to be caught up really easily. He is uh, about a, a five-year-old, so he's still got a little bit of brown on him. Um, in past years, the eagles that were five had pure white heads and pure white tails, and now, um, as they're not needed in the breeding population as much because our population has grown, they tend to maintain their, their um, youth a little longer. His eyes aren't quite yellow yet. His beak has got a really good color to it. But anyway, so what we're gonna do is, um, Raven, I'll have you come on this side and then I'll, okay. I'll draw, draw some blood from him. For many of our patients, including bald eagles, trumpeters, swans, loons, um, vultures, and um, hawks that are possibly exposed to lead, doing a blood test right away is really important. We can get the blood values um, within about five minutes. So we can start treatment right away. Hi, I know you're such a good patient. They really are good patients. Um, I used to work in the human med medical field and uh, they're, uh, they're really amazing compared to people. Aren't you? Yeah. Okay. We're going to do a wait now. Really important to see where he's at. Um, he has been here four days, and um, we want to make sure that he's not losing weight and maintaining. 376. Very good. Thank you. Good job, buddy. Again, they're not sedated, and basically it's a matter of. Uh, having them feel comfortable um, with us and our voice. You're not going to hear a lot of shouting around here. You're not going to see a lot of quick movement. Um, or um, I think that even they can tell when you're upset or angry. So we're pretty chill. Last day of shots, we have four days on, twice a day. And this is uh, calcium EDTA. And it's mixed with, um, I'm sorry. They are painful injections, so the bird has to undergo a whole lot, um, as we do. Um, it's a lot of intensive care when they have lead poisoning to try to get their organs functioning again, uh, often their liver failure or kidney failure. And again, mentally, they're, they're a, little, a little off. Um, they, start, they can have hallucinations, and those are things that we have to be uh, aware of. So what we're gonna do now is take him to x-ray. Um, that will just be the x-ray you can just right over here and it'll be just a, a minute, putting him down on the x-ray machine and uh, getting some, uh, getting some um, film and see what we can see inside of him. And that's uh, a really important aspect of what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Got it. I got it. 
Don't see any broken bones. That's good. So it's been just a couple of minutes and uh, um, he is, has everything that he needs. Uh, we did an exam coming in. We um, have x-rayed him. We've done blood work on him. Uh, we've uh, examined his, his eyes and his reactions as well. And now he's gonna be going back into the box so he can rest. Resting is a really important thing. We don't wanna keep them highly stressed because um, that increases their heart rate and it just um, increases the uh, possibility of a, of a problem with them and uh, we want them as relaxed as possible. So again, we, use, um, we don't use um, big boxes. We use, um, I mean, we don't use big cages, I'm sorry. We don't use ever cages. Um, they can see through it and they get frightened, very frightened with that. So he's um, gonna go into a box for the night. It just has a, a light cover over the top. They're very comfortable with that and um, he will be continuing treatment um, in a few hours. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully, we'll be able to see this guy released um, sometime soon and uh, maybe down in Sauk City. Well, that's about it. Um, we were able to show you an eagle being admitted and how they're treated, um, how we handle them, and how they're kept in care. Uh, people always say, are they tame? Uh, no, they're not tame and they're not sedated. It's just a matter in how we handle them. Uh, I was happy to be able to show you the flight building, which is an important aspect of the work that we do, and in getting them back conditioned and getting them back on the wing in 100%. So when they get out there, they can, they can hit it and, and survive, and that's what it's all about in wildlife rehabilitation. In the summer, we have tours. We have adventure camps for kids. So please jump on our Facebook and or on our website and find those times and dates and uh, give a call and uh, come on up and see us. It'll, we won't have snow in the summer, so that'll be a positive. Anyway, thanks for your support. We appreciate it. Take care.